I used to be a doormat. I lived a lifetime as a doormat and it still rears its head. And I truly believe that what makes a doormat is when you are super sensitive, super empathic, and you also have very low self-esteem. So the combination of being an empath and having really low self-esteem can truly make you what I call a downtrodden empath. So then, and that's what makes you a doormat. So when you are a doormat, a people pleaser, and then you follow spiritual, conventional spiritual teachings, which is exactly what I used to do, um, it can, and this is what I want to look at, it can turn you into a true doormat. So I still get um, letters from people. Oh, and by the way, as I'm speaking, I'd love for you to tell me not only where you're from, where you're tuning in from, but also do you relate to being a doormat? Do you relate to being a people pleaser and being a super empath? Now, a people pleaser is somebody who worries more about what everyone else thinks, what everyone else wants, and what pleases everyone else than themselves. A people pleaser is someone who's unable to say no, even at the cost of your own um, energy, your own time, you find it hard to say no because you don't want to displease other people. You don't want to disappoint other people. That is what a doormat is and that is the person I used to be probably my entire life. So um, I wasn't that smart because I literally had to die to to learn that I didn't have to be that, but I digress. And I know all of you tuning in are probably a lot smarter. Anyway, um, we talk, spiritual teachings um, teach us that we need to love people unconditionally. It's very spiritual to love people unconditionally because we are all connected and to not love another is the same as not loving yourself. In theory, yes, that is correct. In spirituality, that is correct. But let me get into this a little bit deeper from a different angle. So I get people very often writing to me saying that they've been hurt. They've been hurt very badly by people, by a spouse, a partner, someone else, but they're trying to forgive them. They want to forgive them. They want to love them, uh, th that person unconditionally. So people ask me, they write to me and they say, please help me to love them unconditionally. Help me. Teach me how I can still love them unconditionally. Teach me how I can forgive them because I'm still in pain. I'm still, in, I'm still hurting. So here's the thing. With me, I always start by saying you have to love yourself unconditionally. If you are connected, which we are, we are connected to everybody. We are an expression of God. All of us are. It starts with loving yourself unconditionally. So if you can love yourself unconditionally, then, you know, so the first thing to do in order to love yourself unconditionally though, is to take care of the pain and the hurt that you are feeling within yourself and to heal that and not be so concerned about forgiving them and trying to love them unconditionally. That'll come later. I'll get to that in a minute. So, the, so step number one would be in not judging yourself for not loving them unconditionally for having hurt you. And also to not judge yourself for not being able to forgive them yet. Don't judge yourself for that. What you need to do is you need to learn to love yourself unconditionally. And the way to love yourself unconditionally is by not judging yourself, by acknowledging to yourself, like you are your own little child, that I have been hurt. I need to soothe my pain. I need to do what it takes to take care of myself first. I know a lot of people who still try to appease the person who has hurt them, who still try to make them love them. They say, oh my God, what am I supposed to learn? And they still go after them saying, trying to love them unconditionally and forgive them so that those people will still love them back. But no, 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 that is what makes you a doormat. Don't worry about loving other people unconditionally. That'll come later and I'll tell you how to get to that. The first thing, your first step is to love yourself unconditionally. 
Here's another area that's a minefield for so many of you that are empaths and people pleasers. Social media. Social media. So um, when you post something, imagine this, you get like 99 positive responses, but you get one negative response. Are you the type of person to focus on that negative response and make that and allow that negative response to spoil your day? That one critic out of a hundred and you focus on that critic and you think, how come they don't love me? I'm going to make them. I'm going to love them unconditionally until they love me. And your whole focus goes on them. And what happens though is as you're focusing on their negative response, your energy levels go down and you spend your whole day focusing on that negative response and you feel worse and worse about yourself and you turn yourself into a doormat. So here's how you love yourself. Last week I spoke about imagining that you're a light bulb and I spoke about um, how if you are a light bulb and if you haven't seen last week's video, after you finish this video, please go back and watch last week's video because I speak about your energy um, and about recharging your battery. So if you imagine that you are a light bulb and you're a light bulb that runs on a rechargeable battery, every time something drains your battery, like when somebody hurts you, when someone hurts your feelings, when someone doesn't treat you with love or respect, um, and, or someone doesn't show you affection, or when you focus on that critical, that um, criticism on social media, all these things drain your battery. As your battery gets drained, that light bulb gets dimmer and dimmer and dimmer. If you allow yourself to love yourself, your only job is to love yourself. As you love yourself, what you are doing is you are charging your battery. And I'm going to tell you how to do that in a moment. But as you charge your battery, your, um, your light gets brighter. And as your light gets brighter, you brighten it up for everyone else around you. And because we're all connected, they feel the brightness of your light. And so unconditional love means other people being lit by your light. You don't physically have to go and spend your energy saying, I got to work at loving that person unconditionally. I got to work at forgiving that person. No, 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 no. That's the old paradigm. That's the paradigm that drains your energy and your battery. All you have to do is charge your own battery so that your own light shines bright so that you don't even have to think about the people. You don't even have to figure out how do I love them? How do I forgive them? Nothing. Just by your light being bright, you are going to enlighten the people around you. You won't discriminate because you will be having fun charging your own battery. That's all you have to do is find your joy to and your passion to charge your own battery, and I'll be more specific about that in a moment, but your only job is to shine your own inner light so others get lit or get illuminated by your light. You won't discriminate because you're so focused on your inner world and shining your light, you don't care who gets touched or enlightened or illuminated by your light. Just like the sun. The sun doesn't choose. The sun, the sun doesn't say, oh, that person didn't forgive me, so I'm not going to shine my light on them. No, you're just going to focus on shining your light. Now, here's how I do it, and I'm going to share this with you. This is my mantra, and my mantra is I will only engage with those who are loving and appreciative towards me. That's my mantra. And I write that everywhere. So I would love for you to adopt it as your mantra. I will only engage with those who are loving and appreciative towards me. When I only engage with people who are loving and appreciative towards me, it charges my batteries. So when I'm on social media, I engage with those who are loving and appreciative towards me. When I create these videos, I create it for the people who are loving and appreciative towards me. I, everything I do is because 
uh, is for the people who are loving and appreciative towards me because they charge my batteries. And for me, creating and sharing these videos brings me a lot of pleasure. It also feeds me and nourishes me from the inside. But I hear back from you that it helps all of, all of you. It helps so many of you. And of course there will be people who will be angry or annoyed or who will click dislike or do their thing. But that's okay. That's more about where they are. Of course there will be critics, but I'm not going to focus on them because that will discharge my battery. And when my battery goes down, my light goes dim and it affects me and also all the people who I encounter, all the people who I create videos for. So it's really as simple as that. So, you know, um, the first step is just to know to recharge your batteries. Recharge your batteries, that's all you have to do. Step two is to make the commitment that you will only engage with people who are loving and appreciative towards you. And then step three is to realize that because we are all connected, when you are charged, when your energy is high, when your light is shining brightly, you are automatically sharing it with everyone around you. You can't help not share it. As I said, it's like a light bulb. You don't have to do anything. You don't have to forgive people or learn to love them unconditionally. No, your very presence, like a lit light bulb, will lighten them. And that is your gift to them and to the universe. It's as easy as that. So anyway, um, I wanna hear from you. I wanna hear your questions. And also, if you, um, if you felt that what I said was really helpful, I would love for you to share this video with anybody who you think would, uh, that it would help. And I'd also lo love to know where are our viewers or our listeners. I'm turning to my husband to ask him. Um, and oh, and by the way, um, I just have to share this. This is a new mug and we've created some portable quotes. My social media uh, manager, Milena, has helped me to design a bunch of um, merchandise. And so if you feel called, I'll, I'll include the link in the comments under the videos. But I love being reminded of, of a lot of the things, you know, I create my own mantras, just like I did, that, that I will only engage with those who are loving and appreciative towards me. I like creating my own mantras and I like keeping them around me as reminders. Mm. So where are the people writing in from? Oh, I've got uh, people saying hello from New Zealand. I've got Yay. people saying hello from Australia. I've got people saying hello from California. Monica says love from Chile, Yay. South America. You're up pretty late. I think it's pretty late in South America. But thank you for tuning in, Monica, and uh, also the people from California. Olivia says hi from Australia. Hi, Olivia. Jack says he's from New Jersey. Oh, wow, New Jersey. That, that'll be like 12 midnight or after. Thank you for tuning in. And so please, you know, if you've got any questions or if you want me to clarify anything I've just said, I'm happy to do that. Maria says, do you think that when people trigger us, it's a sign that we need to heal an aspect of ourselves? You know, I wouldn't focus too, it's a great question, Maria, thank you. Um, I wouldn't focus too much on what it's triggering or what it's trying to heal. And usually when something is triggered in us, it means that we have a button. But I, and forgive me because I know this might go against what a lot of spiritual teachers teach, but I have spent a lifetime before I was sick in constantly trying to work out what is the lesson? What am I supposed to get from this? What does this mean? I'm kind of done with all of that. All I do today is focus on just charging my batteries and doing things that keep my batteries charged. That's all I do. That is the reminder. I, of course, it doesn't mean I'm able to do it all the time, but that is all I remind myself to do. Of course, I get sucked down the rabbit hole every now and then, and I, 
and I see a negative comment and it drags me down or somebody triggers something or pushes a button. But the one thing that I would, that I consciously try and do to climb out of any kind of hole or pit I'm in is to remind myself, like all I have to do is to charge my batteries so that I get energized again, so that my light is shining bright again. What does it take to do that? Apart from engaging with people who are loving and appreciative towards me, I ask myself, um, what would bring me joy right now? What do I feel like doing? What do I love to do? Who do I want to spend time with? Who makes me laugh? Um, what is fun for me? And so things like that, like it's, it's really to get back into that uplifted mode again. And I want to say here, and this is not related to your question, Maria, this is just generally, because we are all connected, many of you have heard of the term entrainment. I mean, I use it sometimes. It's like when, you're, when your energy is high and you walk into a room with people who have lower energy, their energy goes high because you, your energy is high. But um, if you don't know how to keep your energy high, if you're not aware of how to receive, how to find your joy, how to only engage with people who are loving, the danger is you start to get drained because other people's energy is low. And if you're constantly second guessing yourself and thinking, they've pushed my button, what am I supposed to work out here? What am, you know, then your energy gets depleted and you're down there again with everyone else instead of being the one to uplift everyone. So when we are able to keep our energy high, um, what serves us and what serves everyone around us is to continue to keep our energy high and not buy into the beliefs that are going to make us second guess ourselves and, and drain ourselves and try and work out what did I do wrong? What's the button? Where? And get sucked down that rabbit hole that drains our energy because all that's going to happen is we're also going to be down there with everyone and the best thing that we can do for everyone around us is to inspire them by being the light, by uplifting ourselves. You help other people by uplifting yourself and by inspiring yourself and by inspiring them, not by getting down to where they are. Not saying other people are down, but if other people are stuck, if they're stuck and if, they're in prob if they have problems and issues and they can't see through it, the way to help them out is not by going in there with them, but by shining the light so that they can come to where you are. That's the way to do it. You don't help anyone by getting stuck in the problems with them. And I want to also add something here. If you are a parent, if you are a healer, if you are a teacher, if you are a nurse, if you are a doctor, half your work is done if you uplift yourself and make yourself happy and shine your own light and charge your own batteries because your light will help the people around you. It will heal the people around you. It will calm the people around you instead of constantly trying to figure out how can I take care of these kids? How do I do this? How do I heal this patient? How do I help, help this person? Because if you go in tired, stressed, angry, your patients, your students, whatever, your children, they feel that, they feel that. So you make their lives better and your own life easier by uplifting yourself because you take yourself wherever you go. I gather we have another question. Well, you also have an, a whole bunch of hey, hi, hellos. Hi, uh, if I had emojis, I'd press them all right here. Uh, a bunch of people are saying hello to Milena as well. Oh, they're, yes, they're Milena. Probably, they're probably waiting for her to come and actually do the phone properly. I know, they're probably saying, Milena knows what she's doing. At least Milena <laughs> You have hi from Joanna May. Oh, Joanna, you're, you're awake at this time. Well, yeah, it's pretty early. It's like 9.30 or something. Uh, you have a surprise, surprise shout out from Aisha Shahani in Hong Kong. Aisha! Oh my gosh, that's Sony's daughter, my goddaughter, Aishi. Mwah! You have a question from Kimberly who says, 
How do you disengage from negativity if it's from friends or from family? Okay, so <laughs> I'm going to be pretty tough on this one. Um, you have to. You have to take time out and charge your batteries. I don't care what anyone says because you are no good for anyone if you get worn down, run down, whether it's close friends, whether it's family, whether it's your own children. You're not good to anyone if you are depleted. You really do have to take time out. You have to take time out for yourself and do stuff for yourself. And they will understand. If they love you, they will understand. If they don't understand, then I'll kind of, I would have to reevaluate their value in my life because anybody who loves you will want you to do well. Anybody who loves you will want you to thrive. They'll want you to recharge your batteries. They'll want you to be successful. They'll want you to be happy. And when you are happy and you bring your energy there, it uplifts all of them. Remember that anybody who loves you wants you to be happy. And the other thing is that life is not a zero sum game. Um, you know, very often people can get competitive and they can get jealous or envious if somebody is doing well or somebody's successful and they're not. The thing that I want to remind people out there, and this is not for you who asked the question, but generally, is that always remember life is not a zero sum game. And what I mean by that is that when you have winners, then there doesn't need to be losers. A lot of people play life as though there have to be losers in order to be winners. That's not the case. If I do well, it doesn't mean I've taken away from someone else. And in fact, the better you all do, the more inspiring it is for other people to do better. So think of it this way. Don't play small. Allow yourself to shine because you will be an inspiration for other people. You're not taking away from anyone by being successful, happy, healthy, and joyful. Eddie has a question. Does meditation help you to recharge your battery? Yes, it does. So here's the thing. Um, I know people who are really stressed about meditation and if you're stressed about it then no it doesn't help you to recharge your battery so here's how um, meditation does work is that if you can really um, make your life more of a meditation then that is really ideal so in other words if I'm living the kind of life that is so stressful that I really need to take 20 minutes a day to meditate to calm down, then I would reevaluate my life. The fact that I need meditation so badly, it's like it, it, the life isn't healthy for me to need it that badly. But what I suggest is take time out to meditate, absolutely, absolutely take time out. But if you are finding that it's stressful to even carve the time out to meditate, you need to reevaluate your life. It's not that you just need meditation. You need to reevaluate your whole life because it's not serving you. Um, and also, meditation is not the only way to charge your batteries because that's another belief that people have. They believe that if they don't meditate, they're less connected. And so they put this judgment or stress on themselves that I need to meditate more, I need to meditate more. Not necessarily, you know, if, for some people going out for a walk in nature, going to the ocean, listening to music, um, spending time alone, playing with a puppy or their baby, you know, it's very meditative to have a baby fall asleep on you. Um, all these things can be your meditation and all these things are your way to connect. Basically, it's about charging your batteries. When your batteries are charged, you are more connected to your divine self, to your higher self, to God, to your um, expression of God. You're much more connected when your batteries are charged. And that's when the guidance comes through you. And, and your life actually works out a lot better. And we have more questions? We do indeed. Colleen has a very interesting question. How can I shut off a feeling Others' emotions. 
you can't Colleen unfortunately that's one of the gifts and curses of being an empath but you can do things to take care of yourself um, so it is a gift being an empath people have judged it as a weakness being sensitive being empathic but it's actually a strength and a gift and the world needs more of us not less it's because there aren't enough of us that the world is in the mess that that it is in so Colleen what you need to do it's not about growing a thicker skin you don't want to do that it's not about necessarily about having stronger boundaries but sometimes you do need them but it is about embracing who you are and realizing that what you have those traits are actually strengths and their gifts their gifts because they allow you to see the world in a very different way and for you Colleen for anybody so what you've described feeling other people's emotions that is what being an empath is all about and what you need to do more than other people who are not as empathic you need to be more diligent about recharging your batteries you need to be more diligent about making the commitment to yourself that you will only engage with those who are loving and appreciative of you you will only engage with those now I know what people are thinking you're thinking but I have kids to take care of and they're not always loving and appreciative of me or I, I work in a company where people are not always loving and appreciative of me but I have to go I have to deal with these people I have to deal with them but here's the thing you have to deal with them but you will have the energy to deal with them and it won't even feel like you're dealing with them if you honor yourself enough to uh, if you honor yourself enough to tell yourself I will only put energy and effort when people are dealing with me in a loving and appreciative way when people are communicating with me in a loving and appreciative way that is when I will respond to them that is how you teach people how to treat you secondly of course you have to deal with kids or relatives who are not loving and appreciative when your battery is fully charged you're able to be present for those people without letting it affect you they won't notice that you're not being loving towards them because your energy is so full and overflowing they will feel your love too they really will just by your presence but your focus needs to be on only dealing with people who are loving and appreciative towards you and you will have so much more energy and light at your disposal for the ones who are not so loving and not so appreciative of you do we have time for another question okay let's do one more question okay this one is one you're really going to like Betty asks what can we do to end lack of money <laughs> okay so <clears throat> first of all um, when you when Betty asks that question I wish there was some way to ask her when she says end lack of money I am going to assume that she means it for herself and she's not talking on a global scale because if each of us were able to alleviate it within ourselves we would be in a position to alleviate it in the whole world and people are struggling individually and this is why it's hard to alleviate it in poverty stricken countries so I truly believe that when you charge your own batteries you can alleviate poverty within yourself so I'm going to share with you a little story while I am uh, you know and um, while we're on this subject so when I had the near-death experience um, and I came back from the other side and I couldn't go back to the job that I used to have I just couldn't work again at a nine-to-five job and my husband had lost his job as well because he had been at home taking care of me for months on end so there we both were with no job we lived in a beautiful apartment which we couldn't pay for anymore so we had to move out of the apartment um, we i had been sick for the last couple of years we'd had huge medical expenses and all our money had been going to helping care for my well-being right up to my last days I mean literally we had hired 
a nurse to come to our house because I could no longer go to hospital and so on. So now here I was healed, but we had no jobs, um, very little money and had to move, had to leave our apartment. So one thing I want to say is that we moved out of our home, but I noticed one thing and that was there's a lot of shame with being associated that is associated with being poor or with being broke. So in addition to struggling with money, there's a lot of shame associated with. And I found it hard to go back to the community that I used to be in because I didn't want to go back to the to working a nine to five that I hated. I couldn't do that. My life had more meaning than that. And my husband, we'd both been through this together. We both couldn't go back to that life. At the same time, um, we could no longer fit into our old community because our old community were a community that were pretty affluent and we were no longer there anymore. We were, we had to admit, we were struggling financially. We were living month to month and we went and lived in a little humble cottage out in the country where nobody knew us, which was great because it offered me a level of freedom. And in that freedom, I was able to find myself. But here's where it gets more interesting, is that I found that as I got to know myself and I got to know what I loved doing and didn't like doing and what my, you know, what made my heart sing and what my passions were, I was still finding the money wasn't coming. That was still a real struggle for me. And I started to feel fear. And this is another thing that gets in the way of making money. It's the shame of not having money. It's the fear of not having money. I mean, it's a, it's a really heavy subject. It's the fear of it. And also there's a lot of judgment. Many of us can have judgment towards people who do have money. So I would say remove the judgment to people who do have money because life is not a zero sum game. People who do have money doesn't take away from those who don't. So anyway, one day, um, there was a man I met at, uh, at an event and he was very interested in my near-death experience. He was very interested to know the story. And I told him the whole story and I told him how my dad on the other side told me, go back and live your life fearlessly. And so he said to me, well, have you? And I said, I think so. And he goes, so you've been living your life completely fearlessly since then. And I said, well, there's this one little fear I've had. And he said, what's that? And I said, it's the fear of not being able to make money because I can't go back to being that person I used to be. I can't go back to my old job, but I still, I, I have this little fear that the money's not coming and I, we, we can't go on like this forever. And I don't want to be, you know, on the streets and homeless and living in a cardboard box. And, and I, I feel I didn't come back to just live like that and die and go back again. I, I felt there was a bigger purpose and it scares me that I have no money. And this man, he said to me, he said, your dad said to you, go back and live your life fearlessly. And you insult that gift by fearing not having money? And I thought, wow, well, money's a pretty big thing. And he said, you know, you saw your physical body heal against all odds. It wasn't supposed to heal. You came back from the coma against all odds. Your dad never proved you wrong. The universe never proved you wrong. It never proved you wrong when you trusted it. Why can't you trust it this time? And when he said that, it was like, wow. And he said, if I was your dad, I would say, how dare you? How dare you waste the gift by becoming fearful again? How dare you waste that gift? And I thought, wow, okay. And it like, it hit me. It was like a lightning bolt. So I went home that night and I, you know, I was telling Danny what happened. And I said, you know, I've decided to be fearless about my situation. I'm just going to not worry about the money and go do what I have to do as if the money is there. 
And it was from there what happened was that a friend of mine invited me to come and share my story and to speak it and I realized that's what I'm supposed to do. And that was when Wayne Dyer discovered my story on the internet and my book got published and one thing led to another. But the first thing that happened was I had to lose the fear. I had to lose the fear so that I could charge my batteries and shine my light and that is when we start operating on a different frequency. And when you're operating on a different frequency, different things happen to you. Sorry that was such a long message. I was planning that one for another, for another video. But since that question came, and I loved the question, um, I gave it to you this time. So thank you all for your questions. Thank you all so, so much. Um, I'm going to be back next week. I'm looking forward to seeing you. And if you are ever at any of my events, I'd love for you to come up and say, hey, um, just check out my website for upcoming events. And uh, we have lots going on all the time. So thank you all. See you all. And if you think my video is helpful to anyone you know, please share. And I'd love to hear from you in the comments. Thank you. Have a great week and bye.